You know, I never get tired of looking at the, at the Beast Wars because the great thing about Beast Wars, it was, it was kind of an iconic show and then it was like the first CGI uh, animated uh, TV series before they even thought about TV series. Remember Toy Story spent like 300,000 hours putting their show together and, uh, and putting out, I think it was a 48 minute uh, movie and we were churning out uh, half hour episodes every, every few weeks. So you can imagine the amount of manpower and time that went into it. But uh, I never get tired of looking at it because it was such a, a great show and the characters, you know, excluding myself, I enjoyed doing it, but all the characters were fun. Like, how many people can, can, can if I say rat trap, they immediately hear it. We're all gonna die! You know? And Rhinox and, and Cheetor, hey Big Bot! You know, all those guys and, and, and uh, Tarantulas and Rack, Black Arachnia, the sexiest villain on TV. <laughs> I mean, it was, uh, it's, it was one of those shows that has a uh, real lasting power and I, I quite enjoyed it. But, you know, aside from the Transformers, which, well, I've done you know, several iterations of the Transformers, Beast Wars, Beast Machines, Armada, Cybertron, Energon, all those. My first exposure to the Transformers, the first thing I ever did was the, uh, the commercials for the Transformers Generation 2 toys. And I don't know if you remember those, but Transformer Generation 2, batteries sold separately. That was, uh, that was quite, a, quite a long time ago. And when I got, uh, got signed on to, to play Optimus Prime, I went, okay, cool. Because I've been doing cartoons for quite a long, I've been doing cartoons for 30 years, and uh, I just didn't think that it was, you know, I just thought it was another cartoon because it wasn't really part of my world. I mean, I, I, in my world, cartoons were like Mel Blanc, my idol, Dawes Butler, uh, Frank Welker, uh, you know, all those, all those wonderful people who did, you know, Quick Draw McGraw and uh, Huckleberry Hound and all those kind of shows. And this one, I didn't, it just didn't twig to me. And then someone said, you got Optimus? Yeah. Dude, what? Dude, you got Optimus. <laughs> yeah, so? Optimus is huge. And I went, really? Well, I never knew until I came to my very first BotCon. And I went to a BotCon in, I think it was in uh, Disneyland, Van Nuys. And I, how many people here have seen the movie Galaxy Quest? Yeah. Okay, remember when the captain walks in onto the floor of the convention and three girls were standing there and they went, <laughs> like that, remember that? They were just overwhelmed. I walked on the floor onto the, onto the BotCon convention and there were three girls, just like the three girls in Galaxy Quest. And they stood there and they went, <laughs> they went oh my God, I'm in the movie. <laughs> and, I, and then it just struck me, well, wow, this is uh, quite a thing. And, and over the years, I found that, uh, that, that these, uh, these shows, these characters are, are sort of models, a lot of uh, role models for a lot of kids. And I said, a lot of the, the, the like, uh, moral codes and ethics of these kids said, you know, my whole life I, I grew up with these and I've sort of patterned my life after these kind of things. And if it weren't for that show, I wouldn't have done this, or I wouldn't have done that. I went, oh, thanks. Thanks for putting that responsibility on me. No. So now I cannot be a bad guy. I can't be, you know, I can't go rob banks or beat people up on the street. I have to be like the characters I play, and I try my best to be like these characters, except for the, uh, the character in T3 who says, kill them all. No. I'm not like that. That's psycho, psycho optimist. So.